Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining the session today about light, Lightning Locker Service. Uh, my name is Far Hunter here. Uh, a little bit about myself. I've been with Salesforce for about 10 years, and I've had pretty much any uh, job at Salesforce. I started account, uh, out with account management. I did support, support engineering. I moved into R&D a few years ago. Uh, and then uh, as of two and a half years ago, uh, I've been in product management. I, before Lightning, I ran Sandbox product for a couple of years. And now I'm responsible for the customer-facing UI technologies, namely uh, Visual Force, which everybody has heard about, Canvas, and Lightning components. I am also responsible for the security model for Lightning, which is uh, Lightning Locker Service, and today we're gonna talk about uh, Lightning. I'm based out of Toronto, Canada, and I brought uh, a couple of engineering people working on uh, Locker with me. So JF is here with me, and Trevor is also here with me. If you guys could raise your hands. So these are the guys to ask really, really technical stuff. Uh, and these are the guys to blame if not something is not working with Locker Service. <laughs> uh, to start off with everybody's favorite slide, uh, during this talk I'm gonna talk about stuff that's coming out uh, in the future, whether it's in the winter release, in the spring release, but please make sure that you make any purchasing decisions based on what's in uh, production today and not stuff that's coming out later on. Uh, because as we all know, sometimes uh, and often it does, uh, features do miss their uh, release dates. A uh, quick look at the agenda. Uh, we will briefly look at JavaScript security along with XSS. Hopefully that will drive the point of why we need Locker. Uh, then we'll talk about what Locker is, do a quick demo of Locker capabilities. Uh, then I'll talk about a couple of tools available to, for you, our platform developers on how you can check Locker compliance in your own uh, organizations with your own Lightning applications. And then last but not the least, we'll talk about how we are uh, planning to roll out and enforce Locker uh, today. All right. So Aura is an open source JavaScript framework. It's JavaScript on the client side, Java uh, on the server side, and Lightning framework, which you all develop on on the platform, uh, basically uh, pulls off of Aura. JavaScript has been out, out there for about 20 years. Uh, it's actually, fun fact, it's about the 11th most popular programming language today. And ever since uh, JavaScript has been out there, JavaScript security has get, gotten a lot of attention because the way JavaScript uh, re, uh, interacts with the DOM, it poses or opens up a lot of risk uh, for your end users and your customer data. One of the most important JavaScript uh, security vulnerabilities is cross-site scripting, XSS. It's forced JavaScript injection or just JavaScript injection. Uh, XSS is a common website attack which will give hackers access to your customer sensitive data, among other things. So it's basically loaded command or malicious script sitting on your uh, own website. So here is a really simple example. Let's say you have a website and you have a shopping cart which is uh, vulnerable to XSS attacks. A hacker comes along, injects some malicious code in your website. Next time when a customer comes in uh, and enters some sensitive data, that data is no longer going to you. It's going back to the hacker who will steal it, sell it, or use it however uh, they want. Out of all the web security attacks, XSS uh, uh, account for 84% of all of them. So let's try to bring it home. We talked about JavaScript security, we talked about uh, XSS attacks, but why do you guys care when you're developing on the Lightning platform? So in this image you can see I have a Lightning app page in my browser open, and I have multiple components, uh, all from different namespaces. Some of them are from the Salesforce namespace, some of them I install from managed packages, uh, so on and so forth. The issue here is all of these components have unrestricted access to the DOM, which means any component can read data from another component, uh, the render data from another component. It doesn't have server uh, access to the server data, but definitely the render data by any other component is accessible by any other uh, component. Another issue is none of these components are sandboxed in any way. So if you have an issue with a particular component, uh, it has potential to uh, cause uh, effects outside of itself, meaning on the entire page with other components. As you know, uh, Trust is Salesforce's number one value. The protection of customer data is our number one value, just like protection of your customer data is your number one value. So we wanted to solve this particular problem 
uh, with technology. And our answer to that is uh, locker service. So, okay. So, locker service com combines a few JavaScript techniques such as scope shadowing of global functions, strict mode, duct taping, uh, wrappers to securely encase window, document, and element in a way to give you fine grained access. Uh, to access, uh, fine-grained access controls. Notice I did not mention iframes because nowhere in Locker uh, we use uh, iframes. So that's important to note. I'm not going to talk about too much about the implementation of Locker, but I'm going to talk about what it does and why it's important. So it enforces five things. Strict mode, you do not have to implicitly say use strict in your code. It just applied as long as Locker is on. And it enforces JavaScript best practices. So you, with Locker service on, you cannot say blah equals 33. You have to say var variable blah equals 33. And what's important to note, if you're using any third-party libraries with your components, they, should, they must also use uh, strict mode. Secondly is the DOM access. Uh, Locker service will limit the access to the DOM uh, to your own namespace. And this is, again, so you can't scrape data off of other components. Uh, re restrictions to global references. Uh, you can access intrinsic objects such as uh, array, uh, but Locker Service will provide you secure versions of non intrinsic objects such as a window. And then the, the secure versions of these objects uh, automatically and seamlessly control access to the object and its properties. Supported JavaScript uh, APIs only, which means Lightning has its, its a subset of the Aura APIs. But those are the only publicly available and supported uh, APIs in Lightning Framework. We do have other APIs which are available in Aura, but they're not available in Lightning. So what Locker Service will do, it will restrict you uh, from using things like event, uh, $A event service, which is uh, Aura API, but not uh, enabled or supported in Lightning. And last but not the least, uh, content security policy. It will uh, for basically specifically for XSS attacks, and it will do that by disallowing the use of things like unstrict inline and unstrict uh, uh, unsafe inline and unsafe eval. Also, notice if you're using any third-party libraries, please update them to the most modern versions, the ones which do not use unsafe inline and unsafe uh, eval. All right, so the stuff it prevents is, is pretty uh, easy to understand. XSS and similar uh, security attacks, you no longer you will restrict the access uh, to the DOM, so you can't scrape data off another component which is not in your namespace. And as I mentioned, the uh, calling out it will restrict calling out undocumented APIs. What it enables us to do is number one, if you're an ISV uh, partner and you want to post a package on the app exchange, it goes through security review. Today, because Locker Service is not enforced everywhere, a manual uh, tester has to sit through and go through every line of your code and make sure there is no security vulnerabilities before they pass the, the review. Slightly, I'm exaggerating it slightly, they have some tools, but still it is a, a manual process. And when Locker Service is enabled, because security is inherently part of the software and part of the technology, you no, no longer, the manual tester no longer has to sit through and sniff through each line of your code. So for if you're an ISV, this is great news for you because the security review process just got a lot shorter. It will also do, let us uh, enforce uh, JavaScript's best practices, and on the Salesforce side, it will let us do cool things like API versions in the future. Uh, also, uh, in the future, as you know, technology in a way, it will help us uh, implement newer security features to keep yours and your customers' data safe. All right, so a quick example of how Locker uh, works. On this page, I have a base lightning component UI button provided by Salesforce. I have a weather component and a map component which are part of the same namespace. And then I have a finance component part of namespace two, and this finance component, I have uh, some sensitive data uh, in it. All right, 
This is what the world looks like with locker service not enabled. On the top right of the screen, you can see the real DOM, and at the bottom right, you see the JavaScript of, uh, from all of these various components on your same page. And as you can see, all the JavaScript has access to the real DOM, which introduces the issues that are, the security issues that I was talking about. Meaning, uh, the data rendered by any other component, for example, in this case, the finance data, which is uh, sensitive, can be accessed by any JavaScript, whether it's from the phase one or any other uh, JavaScript. So now let's move on and see how Locker changes things. The right side of the screen, UI button, which is a Salesforce provided component, comes from a privileged namespace because we provide it. It runs in system mode. And when you're running in system mode, you have access to the real DOM. This is not where the magic is happening. The magic is happening on the right side of the screen. On the right side of the screen, I have my weather component and also my map component from namespace one. And notice when they request the DOM, they do not get the real DOM. They get the shadow DOM or the secure DOM. Same thing with uh, namespace two finance component, I get access to the shadow DOM or the, uh, the secure DOM. Another thing to notice is names, uh, namespace one components can no longer access the elements from namespace two, which is the finance component, my sensitive uh, data. And vice versa. Namespace two finance component cannot access data from my weather component, even data from my UI input component. So now we have sandboxed every component within its own namespace. Two other things to notice is the sticker, the red sticker on the top left. Strict mode, again, you can't say with locker service on, you can't say blah equals 33. You have to say var blah equals 33. And CSP is enforced, meaning you are no longer allowed to do unsafe inline, unsafe eval. CSP is an industry-specific specification. Uh, all modern browsers support it. IE11 does not support CSP version one, and that is why we have already started uh, deprecation of support for IE11 uh, for the Lightning platform and Lightning experience. The Microsoft Edge browser, which is new, uh, does support CSP. Uh, so if you're a Microsoft user, you can continue using Edge. Uh, but December 2017, you will no longer, starting December 2017, you will no longer be able to use IE11 with Lightning. All right, theoretically everything works in theory, but does it work in practical applications? So let's see a quick demo. In this organization, I have the locker service critical update off, not activated, so nothing is running in locker, with locker enabled. And on this particular lightning page, I have two components. On the left, I have the accounts detail component, which I created in my own namespace, C. And it is you know, giving you me some account information on the, on the page. I also downloaded a fancy chart managed component from a different namespace other than C into my organization use Lightning App Builder to put it on my page. So now I have two components on the same page, one for my C namespace, one for a manage uh, package component. Just a note that security or crowd check will never allow uh, this component to be listed on the application, but the, for the purpose of the demo, just go with me. So I'm gonna click this button. It indeed does you know, show me a, a fancy chart. But if you notice at the bottom right here, it is taking information or you can scrape data from my uh, custom lightning component which I built myself from the same namespace. So these two are different namespaces but this one can read data by doing simply document dot uh, get elements by tag name. Now let's see if Locker, how Locker changes things. So I simply go to critical updates in the setup. I activate Locker. It will ask me to confirm. I said confirmed. Now this organization is running with Locker on. All right, same two components, account information, fancy chart, click on the same button. Fancy ch chart is still there, but it can no longer access my data. It can no longer access my DOM because of the different namespaces. So we have time. I wanna show you another similar demo. All right, so 
On top of securing your data, we also want to enforce uh, security best practices on all our platform, uh, platform developers. So in this example, uh, the image of the left shows the representation and the actual component is on the right. So I have a custom component that I created in my org. Uh, I got really innovative with the name, it's called Locker Service Demo Component. Inside it, I have another component uh, from a third party vendor, different namespace, and it's the Salesforce provided GUI button. And inside the UI button, and I have, uh, in my own namespace, created a DOM element. Everything is green, which means I'm getting access to the real window, real document, real element. I can uh, reach into other people's DOM across namespaces by doing something like div.parent node. And also, if you notice at the bottom here, Aura event service is not a lightning supported public API. It's part of the Aura framework, but it is not uh, whitelisted and document for, uh, documented for lightning framework. In all our documentation, we say, uh, please use our documented APIs, please use our supported APIs, but we can never enforce it. So we're gonna try to enforce it with Locker and let's see if that works. So go back to my Critical update setup page, activate locker. All right, locker is activated. Refresh the page, everything is running in locker. Click the button. No longer get access to secure window. You get, uh, sorry, no longer access to the real window, you get secure or shadow window. Same thing with document and uh, element. Another thing is you can't uh, reach across the DOM anymore if you are, so you can reach across the DOM within the namespace but not across the DOM with a different namespace because of uh, even trying to do uh, div.parent node which is in red right here. And last but not the least, we were also able to achieve restricting the use of two uh, public APIs. So Locker, as I mentioned, practically is enforcing all the things that I talked about in, in theory. So hopefully after this demo you, you'll believe me All right, let's go back to presentation. All right, so let's say uh, you have Lightning application running, you turn Locker on, what does the error look like in the application itself? This is what the er error would look like. I took a screenshot of this particular error because uh, one of my team's Lightning components team, uh, they have a major epic in Spring 17, Spring goes out in Feb 27, around debugging a developer experience. They want to make all of our errors that pop up from like custom lightning components uh, human readable and self-explanatory. So starting Spring 17, uh, when an error pops up to a developer, it will be self-explanatory. He, he or she will be able to debug it, resolve the issue without logging case for support. And obviously when you reach out to support and log case, that adds uh, unneeded time to your development process. So we talked about what Locker is, 